senior advisor to the Ron Paul campaign, Doug Weed. Doug, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, I look at the Ron Paul candidacy and I look at the numbers, I look at his policy positions, and I say it's absolutely impossible for him to get the Republican nomination. I don't see any math that you can put in front of us tonight that indicates there's any possibility of it. Why is he running in Republican primaries? Well, let me give you some math. Your own NBC Marist poll, the Washington Post ABC poll, uh, the Rasmussen poll, he's been hidden in plain sight for about six months. What the pundits have focused on are the questions like, who do you think? and who do you believe, especially the electability issue. We'll run eight, nine percent in no, these Doug, polls. No, Doug, tell me what poll he's in the lead on. I, I'm, I look at the polls and I say there's not a single poll that indicates he has any kind of chance. Is there any poll that I missed that shows him winning in a state or winning nationwide? Yes, the, every one of those polls I just mentioned to you, when they when they pit Barack Obama against Ron Paul, no, he beats Ron all Paul of against the Mitt Romney. Show me a poll where Ron Paul beats Mitt Romney anywhere. He's within two points of of uh, Mitt Romney in the, those very polls when pitted against uh, Barack Obama. No, okay, that's just a poll. You're not going to okay. You're going to do that spin. That's not it. No, we, we, we no, saw, I agree we with you. That he got he, we saw what he got last night in New Hampshire. He's not. I, where else is he going to get? that. I agree with you that Mitt okay. Romney is the front runner right now. Okay. But the one lesson we've learned from this cycle is that anything can happen. And well, some of these anything. other can't I mean, almost a lot, anything. A lot of things have happened, but once we got to the ballot box, the thing that everybody thought was going to happen happened, which is the front runner became the front runner. But a lot of these candidates that are in this race that you've been talking about tonight aren't even on the ballot in Virginia. They're not on the ballot in Illinois, some of them. Uh, some of them aren't on the ballot in Arizona, where there's uh, 24 candidates on the ballot. So we're running a serious campaign, and we're going to go all the way to Tampa. All right, uh, Steve, I'm told we got a problem with your mic. And so what I'm going to do here, what we get Steve's mic working is, I'm going to give you my theory that I've come up with uh, about the Ron Paul campaign, Doug. Uh, I believe like that what we really have here, I, ke I kept saying in our coverage last night, ignore that Ron Paul number. It doesn't matter. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> nothing's going to happen. But, but what, what Steve is going to tell us is, yeah, you can ignore the number, but there is something important going on here. Here's one of the things I think is going on. He started running for president as a libertarian 24 years ago. None of us mentioned his name when he did. I mean, a couple of friends of mine who were libertarians knew his name and voted for him, okay? He realized in order to get any kind of attention, you've got to be in one of the national party's primaries. So he started doing it in the Republican primary. And, and what that means is what we really have here is a libertarian candidacy. It's a really a third party candidacy, but he mounts it within the Republican Party so he can get this debate attention to his ideas. And he's hoping over a long period of time, he's in this for the long haul, and he's got a son who's in it for the long haul after him, that eventually the libertarian position will be viable in a national election. And he just knows that if you're serious about this, you've got to stay with it for at least 30 years. Yeah, that's a very good analysis. There, there, there are a few little nuances that you might have missed. Uh, it's not quite libertarian. For example, we talk about South Carolina. You had these evangelicals on early in your show. I, I'll actually be at that event in Texas Friday. Uh, Ron Paul is one of only two Southern Baptists in South Carolina. He pulled second among evangelicals in Iowa. There's a very curious change. That's, it's a paradigm shift taking place in the Republican Party. And the thing that makes him different Ron Paul different from a Patrick Buchanan insurgency or Jesse Jackson insurgency is that it is not just libertarian but it is philosophical it's 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 better to describe it as constitutional back to the Constitution and it's created a whole intellectual awakening among young people their publishing companies their blogs their nonprofits it's something like the Barry Goldwater uh, revolution and a fascinating change in the whole party Steve, tell me how to think about Ron Paul. Yeah, I mean, I think he's both very significant and very insignificant at the same time. <laughs> he's significant for the reasons you outlined. There's a long game here, and I think the long game in terms of the politics, presidential politics, isn't about Ron Paul. It's about Rand Paul. It's about the son, you know, from Kentucky, who has some advantages that Ron Paul doesn't have. He's a better communicator. He's made inroads into the conservative establishment that Ron Paul has failed to make, and he's shown certain ability to be sort of savvy politically. He's, he's sort of, uh, you know, modulated the way he talks about foreign policy in a way that Ron Paul won't, but in a way that makes him more acceptable 
favorable to the Republican establishment. So if you're Ron Paul, and this is the reason why I don't think Ron Paul will run as a third party candidate this fall. If you're Ron Paul, you know, you make your statement now, you step aside gracefully, and you know that in 2016 or 2020, your son can run and say, okay, 25% for Ron Paul in New Hampshire? That could be 35% for Ron, for Rand Paul someday. So that's the long game I think they're playing. And Steve, I got to say, I love hearing him talk to Republican audiences about Republican parties' uh, over-enthusiasm about war making, to put it mildly, to talk to them about the craziness of our drug laws. This He is opening a dialogue within the Republican Party that never existed before. Yeah, no, there, there's definitely something there in the Republican Party. There's something bigger in the Republican Party that will, you know, quash that for now. But yes, let's see what happens over the next decade. Doug, quickly before we go, you're going to advise him against any third party run, aren't you? I will I will do that. Okay. <laughs> Doug Weed, you're on the record for that one. Doug Weed, advisor to Ron Paul and Steve Kornacki, whose mic wasn't working long enough, I'm sorry to say. Read his piece at salon.com about Ron Paul. It's great. Thank you both for joining me tonight.